And the last little piece to consider in German unification is that immediately upon becoming a unified country in January 1860, or sorry, 1871, Germany is this powerhouse of a nation. They're large, they're economically successful, and they are what we would call an industrial giant. And this tends to confuse students at first. You know, how do you go from not existing in, you know, 1870 to being this power, world power, kind of competing with Great Britain as the most powerful country in the world, uh, you know, the following year. And you need to remember the sprite conditions, and they do have large supplies of resources, in particular coal and iron, which are very helpful for industrialization. Uh, the government was in full support of the industry. Right? There's this real belief in science and technology as being a helpful thing. So you had the government support and you had this social support as well. There's also a population boom, so a large supply of individuals, okay, um, people to do the work, to work in factories. And, you know, let's not forget that it's not like there had been no industrialization prior to 1871. There was progress made earlier on when the German states were all separate. And then lastly, they really do, I mean, you know, even today Volkswagen and other German products will tout German engineering as being the best in the world. And there is something to that. There's a real belief in science and a real use of science to develop new products. A couple of pictures of a German factory worker and a German factory on the right. And in fact, the factory on the right is a factory that is producing guns. So I'm leaving you with a little bit of foreshadowing, but this does conclude the unification of Germany.